um, the eighth parak, the eighth chapter, um, somewhat easier uh, content than uh, than we had until now, and some Agadaic teachings. And this deals begins with the halachas of who is a part of the group. We've seen that a carbon pesach requires that. Uh, um, a carbon pesach requires that people be designated to that particular group and join in uh, in that group. Who's designated? Who's allowed to change? Um, what are the assumptions of which group someone's in? So we'll see those halachas, <coughs> and also quite a bit of uh, agade, uh, agada as well with it. So it begins with uh, what is the assumption of a married woman or a newly married woman? who uh, did not designate herself to a particular carbon Pesach, do we assume that she is in the same carbon Pesach as her father or as her husband, uh, assuming that she didn't go to bring the carbon Pesach? So a woman, if it's at the time that uh, the carbon Pesach is being brought, she's in the household of her a husband, meaning she did not go for, to her parents for Pesach. She's at home with her husband for Pesach. So Shachat Aleha Ba'alav and Shachat are even if both her father and her husband designated her without having asked her uh, on their Karim Pesach, Techem Mishel Ba'alav, she joins her husband's and eats of her husband's. But if it's a first, uh, first uh, uh, Yantif, first Pesach after her marriage, and she went to spend it with her parents. So then, um, if both of them designated her onto their carbon, she can choose where to go. The Gemara is going to ask, is this retroactive? Later, she can choose where she, which one she's accepting at the time of Shechita or not. And this would be the concept of Bereira, as we'll see in the Gemara. Um, Yosem, if you have an orphan, who has two custodians of the of uh, the estate until he grows up, and both of them designated the orphan unto their own um, karm pesach. Yachav Moshe writes, he too can eat whichever he wants. Ever shall shnei shutfin, a servant who belongs to two uh, partners, lo yachav mishal shnei, cannot eat of. Both of, uh, of of either of them, unless they both agree that it would be a part of their uh, carbon pesach. The idea is that the the evet is really a, a part of the household, and um, as as a part of the household gets to eat the carbon pesach as a part of the mitzvah of the family, and um, uh, and uh, since there are two such families, he would have to then. Um, get both to agree that he's on this particular family's carbon pesach. So too, if someone is half emancipated, where one uh, one owner emancipated him, the other didn't. So the, he cannot assume that he would be a part of the owners unless the owner uh, the the half unless that person agrees and says that that he is a part entirely a part of this. Um, a chabur of this family group. So to start off with, we, the, the Mishnah seems to be saying that the woman who uh, has both her husband and her father not having asked her designate their carbon Pesach, her onto their carbon Pesach, she can later choose which one she will have joined. Shmas mina yesh breira, which tells us that there's a concept of breira. John, you joined just in time to hear the breira idea. That this woman, after she, uh, um, uh, so her husband went and brought the carbon pesach and designated, uh, said, okay, I'm counting. I got you know 15 people on this carbon pesach, including my wife, and her father did the same, included you know all his kids at the at, at his carbon pesach. So now there are two. She has a choice which one to go to, and the and the simple reading of the Mishnah seems to indicate that at the time of eating, meaning pa- past the time of shechita, of shechting the carbon, which is the moment that locks in who's in the group, she can retroactively back to that moment. So let's say the, the carbon was shechted at six o'clock in the afternoon, each one of their carbons were about six o'clock. 
nine o'clock at night, they're ready to sit down at the Seder. She will then be able to retroactively place herself in whichever one she wants. And that's Brera, where you can retroactively assume some, the, the intent or the meaning or, or, or the effect of what happened at a previous moment. And Shmas Mino, from here on Mishra, you could see the Yesh Brera. So Agmar says, no, my Reitze B'Shashkita. Perhaps what it means is uh, that she wants to do it at the time of Shkita. Meaning, she can designate herself, nor, or, or better said, she must designate herself at the time of the Shechtin. Whereas, generally, we would say that uh, the, uh, whereas generally, we would say that uh, a, 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 um, a, a woman is, can assume that her husband can designate for her, and she doesn't have to uh, give permission or, or verbally join, just as other members of the household, uh, one person can take him and, and bring the carbon Pesach on behalf of them in the, in the normative assumption that they would be a part. In this case, where she went to her parents for Yantif, and her father also designated, and her husband uh, on, her, on his, and her husband designated on his, she would then have to designate which one she's going to be a part of so as not to be left in limbo. And and uh, uh, and that's the idea of over here. But it's not the Avar Mishnah, and it's not a, a, a concept of Brera, as we'll, we'll see later, is in Machlokas. Now, for a minute, we have a, a contradiction. To our Mishnah, our Mishnah uh, said that the first that the the assumption is she is uh, a, a a part of uh, the the designation that her husband made for the carbon is the one that sticks, unless she went to her parents. For, or to her father for that yantif. Very uh, we have a contradiction. However, the Brisa says the, that the, the, the default of the first yantif is that she eats of her father's carbon. And it's in the second yantif and on where she would then eat, um, uh, she would have to designate herself and say whether she's a part of the the, the, her father's uh, uh, group or a, father, a part of her husband's group, but she it would not be by default either of them, and she would have to designate it. So that's a contradiction to our mission in both ends. Sigmar says, Lakasha Kamba Rudufa Lelich Kamba Shaina Rudufa. It depends. Is she constantly going back to her parents' home? Um, and, 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 and she lives in the vicinity, she's always a part of uh, her parents' home. Uh, uh, and 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 associates in that way to her uh, uh, to her family um, uh, to her, to her parents. So then the assumption is she wants to be a part of her father's uh, uh, karma. Whereas if she is now independent, she has separated herself and joined her new uh, uh, you know, her to make her new home. Uh, so so that's her home. Well, then uh, our, that's the case of our Mishnah. Our Mishnah says that the assumption is that she's joining her new family, meaning her, her husband and, uh, and herself are making their own Karban Pesach. And so uh, uh, the, even if her father uh, designated her, that she would not be uh, included unless they actually are spending at their father at her father. Whereas in the Brights, I was talking about where she really still associates and still goes back home to her uh, um, uh, father's household, um, uh, uh, and, and 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 therefore she doesn't yet feel um, comfortable in her own you know in her own home to say that she and her husband are making their own Pesach and therefore the assumption is that the first Yantav she's uh, by default on with her father and from there on unless she designates she won't we won't know what the default is um, so the Gemara now is going to bring a verse to, to support this idea and uh, um, and and then from there go on to other uh, other drash on the meaning of that verse. The um, what's the chiv as it says? Azayisi be'enov kamotze shalom. Then I was in uh, uh, um, uh, this is in Shirashirim that when uh, um, 
I'm like a wall and like like fortresses, uh, and uh, then I was a uh, I found uh, um, I, I I was in his eyes like I find peace. And so there's the idea that um, a woman can feel beloved in her own home, and uh, and only then will she consider it her own home. But there are times where she won't. And she would still consider her her um, original family a family, uh, or her birth family a family, and therefore still be running back for her own sense of security and comfort, and and would be joining her father's um, her father's safe. Vam Rabbi Yechon Rabbi Yechon explains that pasuk kekalosh and nimsu shleim beis chamia. The idea is that in her husband's household or she she senses the acceptance in her in-laws home and uh um she's proud to tell her her acceptance to her father but she feels accepted enough and therefore she would be a part of her husband's seder by default as it says the uh it will be on this day that you will Count that you will call me. We, Am Yisrael, says, uh, 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 Hashem says to Am Yisrael, you will call me Ishi, my, uh, my, my, my spouse. Will not call me uh, my, my, my master. Hashem is saying to Am Yisrael, you will call me such. And, and the idea is that it, the, the standard used to be back uh, in the time of the Gemara that. Uh, there would be an engagement that was discussed and uh, commitments made for a date for a marriage and commitments made for dowry, et cetera. And about a year later, actually more than a year later, is when the marriage will actually take place. So during that year, uh, the the uh, young girl would be living at home and uh, be engaged to someone perhaps from another city, another uh, uh, some distance away. So the relationship was one of distance and one of uh, 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 a, a um, you know, somebody else taking care of the wedding and taking care of everything and you're just going to show up to the party. And so really someone else is in control and, and, and you're not a partner. Hashem says, you will call me Ishi, you will call me your 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 um, a spouse and not Ba'ali and not your master. So we see that the, the sentiments need to change within uh, the relationship. And, and, and that's the, the idea of us, of that at that point I feel accepted, I feel whole, and, uh, uh, and that's this idea. So that changes what these two brises are going on. Amar Rav Yechonen, as Rav Yechonen explained, that when is she called Ishi? Uh, uh, when, 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 when does she call her, her husband, or we call Hashem my spouse, versus Bali my master? Kekala beis chamer, when the the bride moves in to uh, her husband's home, into uh, into the uh, a marriage home. Veloke kekala beis not when she is still at home waiting for the wedding day. So the the the. Um, Gemara now is going to continue with the drash from uh, Shir Hashirim. Over there in Shir Hashirim, that verse that we just brought, that she will feel like she is complete. Then I was in his eyes, shalom, like one who finds peace, who is found to be complete. The beginning of that verse says, I am like a, uh, a, a city wall, and my breasts are like a, a, a fortress. So, says, There's another verse in Shir Hashim there that says, we have a young sister um, and she is not yet developed, meaning she has no breasts, uh, she has not developed yet. What does that mean? This is a reference to a place like Elam, which was a great a place of great scholars, which had the merit to study, but not the merit to teach. And this is the idea that um, uh, uh, there are people that develop but don't have the ability to nourish others, to give 
um, and, and help to the development of others. They, they're self-perfecting, but not world-perfecting, not, not giving others. And that's this idea we have as a young sister, but she doesn't have the ability to, to nourish others yet. But I am a, a fence. I am a wall, a city wall, and my and my breasts are are, are fortresses. What does that mean? I am the, the the city walls, the protective wall. That's the Torah. That's protective to the self. And those that give off nourishment, so the breasts, so those that give off nourishment, are like fortresses. And these are the scholars who have the vision like a fortress, to set, a high tower to be able to see uh, the distance and be able to not only protect from an imminent threat, but also to uh, the vision to see beyond what's, what's near and close to protect the city, to protect the, the, the community that way. Varava, my Rava says, I am the wall that is the, 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 uh, the soul, the national soul of Am Yisrael. And my breasts are like power, uh, uh, like um, fortresses, like towers. Elu um, batiknisis These are the study halls and the shuls, which, uh, um, which again give nourishment to Am Yisrael. And uh, uh, both of these uh, are defining this as well as giving nourishment. But one says the nourishment is those that nourish have the ability to have vision. And the other is that says that the, those that nourish that are nourishing, meaning the shuls and the schools and the, and and the study halls, they have the ability to give the the fortress its its strategic ability, and the na- the national soul of Am Yisrael gets its strategic ability to to maintain itself through the study of Torah and through davening. Amar Rav Zuter Batuvi Amar Rav, Maidersiv. What is the meaning that of this verse? that our uh, sons are like saplings planted uh, um, that are growing uh, in their youth. And our daughters are like corners uh, that are hewn out uh, the structure of the uh, um, of the hecho of the Beis HaMikdash. So what, what does it mean our, our sons are like saplings planted. These are the young of Yisrael that had never sinned, never even tasted the taste of sin. They're, they're pure, and this is the idea with, with uh, uh, sin. We don't get the desire for it until we actually have some sort of mental uh, uh, taste that we give ourselves, and then we want it. So that's the taste that, that, that creates the, the uh, uh, desires which lead astray, and a person can uh, uh, can uh, um, keep themselves in that purity, and that's the the young of Yisrael that are planted. They're planted uh, saplings planted because they have the roots and uh, and and no uh, blemishes yet. But and the our daughters are like corners. What are the corners? Elobisulas Yisrael shaoidis peschei lebalein. That corners corners uh, uh, um, don't allow for passage through. This it's full in that sense where it blocks itself, covers itself. So too they keep themselves. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 they abstain until they are married. And so too it says, "Umalu kamizrak kazovius mizbeach." They filled like a vessel of uh, uh, um, that contains the blood for spritzing. The corners of the mizbech. So you see, the corners are in this in the drash over here. Would be the that the corners are full. So we see that the, the a corner is is a concept of containing. or perhaps mehacha from here. So the in that same parakatilim it says the verse says mizaveinu maleim afikim mizanalzan. That our corners, and that's the, the, the drasha of the word Mizavenu, our corners are full and uh, they, they give forth from one nourishment to the other. So the, the full, we see that the, uh, the corners are where the, it can, it, the items are contained and f- in fullness. So too, this is the containment, the, the, uh, 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 the um, 
being chased uh, that, that the, the, the daughters of Israel have. In that verse, it says that they are like hewn out like the, the structure of the Beis HaMikdash. Elu ve'elu, both these young uh, men and these young women are they are like the reconstruction of the Beis HaMikdash in their day. So the Gemara now tells us, a, a, um, since we brought the verse of Hosea, which was that uh, there, then uh, the, the, uh, on that day you will call me your spouse and not call me your, your master, and then Hashem speaks. Really, this comes from Hosea and the, the metaphor of Hosea's existence uh, in, in the Nevoah that we have is also a metaphor of marriage and the understanding of the relationship of Hashem to Am Yisra. So, Dvar Hashem Asher Hoya El Hosea. And now it introduces the, the, uh, the prophecy to Hosea. So, the word of Hashem that was to Hosea, Bimei, in the days of Uziyahu, Yosem Achaz Yechizkiyahu Malchi Yehuda. He, like, other, like some other of the prophets we'll see, uh, was a prophet during the reign of the four kings, Uziyahu, Yosem Achaz Yechizkiyahu, the kings of, the, of Judea, of Yehuda. And at that period, there were a total of four prophets that prophesied at that same time. And Hashem was the greatest of them all. As it says, The beginning or the start of the words of Hashem is with Hashem. But it's not, he wasn't the first prophet. There were many prophets from Moshe to Hashem. Rather, it means he was first or the head of the four kings of the Jewish people. Rather, it means he was first or the head of the four prophets that prophesied at the same time. The Elohim, and these are them, Hosea, Yeshayahu, Amos, and Micha. Uh, um, and in these four prophets, it says by them that they prophesied, by, uh, uh, it says in the names of these or some of these kings that they were uh, 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 prophets during that time. Amalek Kaddish Baruch Hu, no Hosea. Kaddish Baruch Hu said, Hashem said to Hosea, Banecha Chatu, it, you, you, your, your, your children, those that you're responsible for, Am Yisrael, they sinned. And he should have responded. This was a prompt by Hashem to have Hosea respond. They're your children, Hashem. They are the children of your beloved ones, uh, of, your, of the ones you showed grace to. Avram, B'nei Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov. They're the children of Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov. And that's the response that Hashem wanted from him. And he and and therefore he should have he would have said Gal Gail Rachamecha Alehen. Um, so therefore bring upon them your grace and your uh, compassion. However, he didn't do that. In fact, he went the other way. It's not enough that he didn't say that. Rather, what he said was mess of the world. The world is yours. Go ahead and swap them out. And end of Am Yisrael and bring another nation in as the ones that you have a mission for the world to bring the world to perfection. They're not doing their job. Bring someone else in. Hashem said, all right, I have to teach you what that relationship means. What can I do to this elder? So Hashem says to him, go ahead and marry a woman that's a harlot. That's that, that, that you, you would never know whether she is faithful to you in marriage. And have children from her, which you will never know whether they're your children or not. And then um, I will tell you to divorce her. Let's see if you can divorce her. So do you want me to send away your children? My children? This is what Hashem says to Hashem. Go ahead and take for yourselves, for yourself, a wife that's that's a, a, a harlot. And we'll have from her children. And it says, indeed, he took this woman named Gomer, the daughter of Devloy. Now, Gomer in Hebrew means to complete or to, 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 to uh, end, to complete. And Devlayim has many different uh, uh, connotations, um, which we'll, we'll uh, um, see the Gemara is going to say a drash on her name. 
what her name was Gomer, that everybody satisfied their needs with her. Um, and Bas, uh, and now we go to Pezayin Amit Beis, uh, 87b. Bas Devloyim, so the first trash is Diba. Devloyim is the word Diba Ra'a. Um, uh, uh, the the uh, words people speak badly about her. In other words, that she was Diba Ra'a, Bas Diba Ra'a. She had uh, 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 people said all sorts of stories about her, um, uh, you know, uh, again and again. So it's the, a, a uh, people speak about her and speak about her again. Shmuel Amar Shemasuka Bafikol Kedvela. He says that, that the meaning of the word Devloim is like uh, the word Devela figs, that she was sweetened to most people, like to all, like uh, um, figs. The, the, what they would do with dried figs is they would press them into like a, a cheese wheel that we'd know, a fig wheel, and they would um, dry them together and then it would be sold in slices. So the way to, the, the way to make a, 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 a devela is by pressing the wheel. So this is the physical act of being together. They all threshed in her or all pressed on her like a, a fig wheel. That's the, the uh, metaphor over there in her name. Davarach, another interpretation. Goymer, Amar Yehuda, Shabikshu Ligmar Mamainu Shal Yisrael Biyamel. That on account of the sin of so many people sinning with her, um, uh, 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 that that uh, the, the money of Yisrael would be lost, either as a punishment or that people were spending so much money on har- harlotry. Rabbi Yechon Amar Bazazu Vegamru. They spent it so much. Shneim Afar says Ki Avdam Melech Aram Meisimim Kafar Ladush. The 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 king of Aram lost them or made them get lost, be 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 lost, and placed them like dust to be threshed. In other words, this is a, a, a hint to the harlotry. So it continues with the story of Shea. He marries this woman Gomer Bastavlayim. Or that's at least her drash name. Vatar vatela And she uh, she bore him a, a son, and this is the the key to Hashem's message to Hashem that he can, that he re- felt this connection to this child that was his, even though he couldn't really know for sure it was his. So vatela lo she gave birth to him, meaning he, he it was his child. He felt that it was his child. And raise it as a child. Call the child's name that planted by Hashem, because ki od maat of akati as the Yisrael al beis Yehu v'shbati mamlochas beis Yisrael. Because I will appoint the the uh, the uh, coming of Israel on the house of Yehu. And uh, the kingdom of the north the, the, of uh, uh, of Beis Israel is going to be destroyed. And Israel means pl- uh, planted by God, so this plant is going to be planted out in 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 uh, destruction, out in the uh, meaning that they were going to be exiled. Then she gave birth uh, uh, again, uh, this time to a daughter. Hashem said to Hoshea, call her no compassion, or not, uh, she is not compassioned, it's in the reflexive. Because uh, uh, in the simple reading, I will no longer have compassion on uh, Yisrael, on the house of Yisrael. Uh, that I should carry them. Hashem says, I'm not going to do that anymore. Then she had another child. And Hashem said, Call this child, uh, he's not my nation. Um, uh, you are not my nation anymore, and I will not be for you as a God. Now that he had these three children, Hashem said to him, Shouldn't you be like Moshe, your master, who um, when once I started speaking to him, sent his wife 
uh, back to her uh, father with with uh, uh, um, the two children and separated from them. You two separate from your wife and from your children. I'm like, Rabbi Nishalem, he said to him, what do you mean, but I have children? I can't send her away. I can't divorce her. I'm like, Kaddish Baruch Hashem said, think about this yourself. Your wife, you can't be sure that she's faithful to you. She was never faithful to anyone. Your children, you can't be sure they're yours. Right? And nevertheless, even though you don't know that they're yours or someone else's, yet you are compassionate and love the relationship and, 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 and love your children and want to keep them and raise them as yours. Yisrael, shame b'nei uh, b'nai. Yisrael, they are my children. B'nei b'chunai. And the children of those that I have tested, Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, b'nei Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov. Echad ma'arba'a kenyanim shekenisi ba'olam. And they are one of four acquisitions that I take responsibility for in this world, which are the four, Torah. The Torah is an, an acquisition I take responsibility for in this world. Kenyan echad echsifr says, Hashem kenani reishas darkon. Hashem acquired me or it made me uh, uh, made a nest for me uh, to protect me as on the, at the beginning of his path. Shemayim va'aretz, so to the heaven and earth, Hashem takes responsibility for that and protects it. Kinyan Echad Echsifra says, Kona Shemayim va'aretz, Hashem who cares for and, and, and protects heaven and earth. Beis HaMikdash, Kinyan Echad and the Beis HaMikdash is an acquisition that he cares for and protects the Echsifra. It says, Har Zek Konsa Yamino, this, this mountain that Hashem's right hand takes uh, takes responsibility for and, 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 and holds up. Yisrael, Kinyan Echad, and Am Yisrael is the fourth Echsifra. It says, Amzu Kanisa, this nation which you have sheltered and protected. And yet you suggested to me that I swap them out for another for a, a, a another uh, nation. So now Hoshea realized he, he made a mistake. He should have uh, uh, he should have protected Am Yisrael and he should have told Hashem something else. See, he sought to to, to pray for himself. Why are you thinking about yourself and protecting yourself and davening for yourself? Pray for the compassion of Yisrael. Because on account of you, I I I uh, uh, made three um, gzeros, three uh, um, uh, uh, decrees against them. So he went ahead and he prayed and uh, um and for compassion for them a bit of zero and 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 the sins were indeed um uh uh um uh, nullified the hiskel of and now he gave a bracha to them shenema for says vayim is parbenei so kacholayim that the number of bnei israel will be as great as the sea as the sand at the sea vayim by um and it says vayim by mokem asher yomer lehem leami and that in the end, instead of saying about them uh, that you are not my nation, uh, he says about them, Yomar uh, Lehem uh, will say about Bnei Yisrael, Bnei Kel Chai, you are the children of the living God. Menik Betzu Bnei Yehuda, Bnei Yisrael Yachtov, and indeed the children of Yehuda and Yisrael, meaning the Northern Kingdom and the and the Judean Kingdom, will join together and 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 finally come together as one nation. The pasuk says, "Zratia li be'eretz v'rachamti es lo ruchama," and I will plant them for myself in the land. Hashem says, and I will com- have compassion about that one which I said they are have. There is no compassion about them. V'amarti lo I mean, I will say to the one that I said is not my nation. Amiata, you are my nation. Amar Rabbi Yechanan, so Rabbi Yechanan said, "Oila le ribonus." Woe to being a leader. Leadership. Shem mekaberes es ba'alel. It it kills off its uh, uh, its um, masters. In other words, kills off those people that are in leadership position because they make mistakes. They put themselves ahead. Because every prophet outlived four kings. As it says, the son of Amot, 
he too was of the Davidian line. He was of the household of the king. And nevertheless, he was a prophet. And he was a king uh, on Yehuda and Yerushalayim in the days of um, these four kings, as we saw before with Hoshea, it was a king of Uzio, Yosem, Achaz, and Nichizkiyo. Why was it that in when uh, Hosea, uh, it, it says by Hosea that he was a prophet during the period of the four Judean kings, it also mentions the one, one uh, uh, northern king, Yeravam ben Yoash. There were multiple Yeravams. This is Yeravam ben Yoash, the king of Yisrael. So, Mepnei Shulekibel Alamos because he did not accept negative statements about Amos, the prophet, Minol. And then how do we know the Imni that he was counted? Because it says, the word of Hashem that was to Hashem, the son of Be'eri, in the days of these four kings, as well as the Demach Yehuda, the kings of Yehuda, as well as Bimei Yeravah ben Yoash, Melech Yisrael, and the king Yeravah ben Yoash, the king of Yisrael of the north. And that's typically not in the verse. So why is it here? Uh, because of his um, uh, not accepting the the slander against um, against uh, uh, um, Amos the prophet, and how do we know that he, that they didn't accept it? The Sefer it says, "Ve'yishla Hamatzia Koin Beisel, Hamatzia who was uh, who was a priest of idolatry, sent a message to Yerava, and Yerava Melech Yisrael and Lemor Kosher Lach. He said that there is a." A, 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 a conspiracy, a coup by uh, by Amos, led by Amos uh, against you. As Amos had prophesied that Yeruvim is going to die by the sword, and uh, that the northern kingdom is going to be exiled, and uh, Amatzia tried to turn this into not a uh, not a uh, instead of it being a prophecy, he said that you know this is a a a, a, uh, a call to arms. That Amos is is uh, uh, calling people against you know, the king, Amar, and however the king responded, No, I know Amos. He's a a, a, a great tzaddik. There's no way that he said that. Amar, and if he did say that, he said it as a prophecy. He didn't say it as a call to arms. Ma'esa, uh, what can I do to him? Shechina Amar Then it would be a prophecy, and Shechina said it to him. Amar Avlaza Filo B'Shas Kasher Shal Kadosh Baruch Zecher Saracham. Going back to the statement by Hoshea that Hashem says, Lo Ruchama, that I do not have compassion on Am Yisrael. Actually, if you look at the verse, the structure of that verse shows that even at the time that Am Yisrael is uh, sinning and has distanced itself from Hashem, nevertheless, Hashem speaks in compassion, even when talking about no compassion. It says, It says, I will not anymore. I will have compassion on the house of Yisrael. It doesn't say, uh, I will no longer have compassion, or it doesn't say, I will have a hatred or, or something like that. It just says, I will no longer. And then it says in the, the structure of the verse says, I will have compassion on Yisrael. Or the end of the verse says, for I shall carry them. Now, the, in the simple reading of the verse, it means, I will not have compassion on them that I would carry them. But the, the structure of the verse says, Ki say SLM, because I would carry them. And furthermore, Rabbi Laza says that Hashem only sent Am Yisrael into, uh, um, into um, exile so that they're spread throughout the world. So that converts join Am Yisrael. If uh, Am Yisrael is all in, uh, in Eretz Yisrael, uh, there would be less chance of, of people to meet and learn and join Am Yisrael. So Hashem planted us into the rest of the world so that more would grow. Shanema, as it says, I will plant them in the land, meaning all over. What does a person plant for? Saw. If he puts in one saw, to take many more out. So to Hashem planted us in the world so that Gerim join, converts join. Rabbi Yechonah says, it's also from this verse, I will have compassion on those that have no compassion. What does it mean when it says, 
al talshen eved el adonav penya kalelcha vashamta. Don't uh, don't speak ill about a slave to his master because then he may the the slave may curse you and you will carry that sin. So the metaphor is don't speak evil about Am Yisrael to Hashem um, because uh, uh, the, that will be held as an um, uh, your as your sin. Now it says at the end of that verse, a, a nation that curses uh, um, its father and doesn't bless its mother. Is it on account of that he curses his father and his mother? That's why you should not speak ill about him to his master. Even a generation that curses its father, meaning Hashem, and doesn't bless its mother, which is the Knesset Yisrael, the, the, the national soul of Yisrael, still don't speak ill to Hashem about this nation. We know this from Hoshea. Amar Abishaya, so Abishaya said, what is the meaning of this verse? That um, the, the, the uh, song that, that um, Devorah sang, Tzidkas Pizronim Yisrael, the Tzidkos Pizronim Yisrael, the righteousness of spreading Yisrael. What does that mean? Tzidkos HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yisrael, Hashem did a tzidkah, a a, a kindness, a goodness to Yisrael, and it spread them amongst the nations. It was a, a statement from a, a, a new Christian, a Roman, uh, after the time of uh, 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 that Rome became Christian, to Rabbi Hanina. He said, We are greater than you. It says about you, that, that the, the general as stood for uh, uh, and the and military besieged um, uh, 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 um, uh, Edom uh, Amalek for for six months and and uh, and uh, killed them. The Ilu Anan, whereas we the Romans is Asinchu Gabon Kamashni. We are with you for many uh, years. We don't do anything bad to you. Right, the goal. Amalek. So Rabbi Hanina said, You want, I can send you one student who can respond to you. He said, Okay, Rabbi Yishai, you go respond. Uh, the reason is, The reason is not that you don't want to kill us, it's that you don't know how to do it because we're spread apart. You, you want to kill all the Jews? We're not all by you, we're not all under Roman control. My the ikugabaihu and the Jews that are on the control, Karlachu Mahusakitiasa. You don't want to be uh, uh, be considered a murderous uh, kingdom. You consider yourself uh, um, enlightened. You don't want to be that. Amar Leh, he said to him, um, Gafa, uh, or uh, uh, this is um, actually the, the the word that that Christians usually use for. Um, the way they pronounce the Yud, the Hey, the Vav, and the Hey, the uh, name of Hashem, but it, in, instead of saying it the way they would, because we don't say it, so it, it, we emphasize the Gimel and the Fe, but really it's J and V the, um, there. So Dorama, by the name of the God of Rome, meaning by their uh, their uh, deity, uh, the Trinity, in Rome, this is what we deal with all the time, how to get rid of the Jews, and indeed, for many generations, Rome continued to seek that. But because Am Yisrael was spread so many places, that was the tzedakah Hashem did with us, that we, the, the exile actually was our savior.